Hey everyone, it's Ian. Uh, first off, I just want to hope that everyone is doing okay in this pandemic. And I pray for everyone as well as their families are staying safe and healthy. Um, I know that things have not been so great given all that has happened, but I'm sure that you guys are doing better than me now that you see the result of me trying to cut my own hair during quarantine. <laughs> Um, but all jokes aside, I am very excited to share with you my AFA capstone project experience. The capstone experience, as stated in the syllabus, is completed by AFA students who are in their third and final year of their focus studies. The experience applies classroom learning to real-world projects and expands your education beyond the four walls of your school. This, these experiences may include internships, performance or research projects, community service, and leadership roles in school initiatives. So for my capstone project, I decided to create a full-length album. Despite all the doubts, <clears throat> Mr. Kurt only saying that I can only do five songs. I'm just kidding. I love you. Uh, I was actually able to complete ten tracks, but to be honest, I couldn't believe it either. I remember my first day in the Academy of the Fine Arts, I was very eager to check out the music technology class until I found out I had to wait until the next semester to take it. Bummer. But even then, we didn't even learn how to record anything, so I was kind of upset that I had to wait until my second year to learn all that stuff. Um, even though I had no experience in recording whatsoever, that definitely wasn't going to stop my hard-headedness in trying to create a track. <laughs> I was actually able to complete my first song for the first AFA album, and it sounded terrible! <laughs> I realized that, of course, I had no experience, so it was fun trying out something new. However, when my second year came, I was ready to be in the studio all day. I made two songs for the next album that came out, and they turned out better than I expected. A huge improvement from the first song that we never talk about, ever. Um, I learned the difference between a dynamic and condenser mic, learned how to set up a microphone for a drum kit, and how to treat EQs on certain instruments such as guitars, vocals, bass, etc. All that knowledge is what brought me here today, and I'm thankful for that so much. Given the skills I learned, I decided to put them to the test by finally creating a full-length album that features my own music. In this presentation, I am going to be talking about the meaning behind all these songs that I listed in my album, as well as a brief walkthrough of how I produced it. So with that being said, let's start with the first song which the album is named after, I Am. So, I Am is about... who I am. Ha! Get it? Okay, okay, okay. While that was partially true, I Am is a song that was made in 2018, but I never got to finish it until now because the song speaks about my individualism. I was a sophomore at the time, and I never questioned what kind of person I am or why I wake up every morning waiting for the next day to pass by. I was just more concerned about either my grade or to make sure that I'm staying out of trouble. <laughs> but as soon as my senior year came, I started to notice how the world can be and the many different perspectives that are living in it. I wanted to talk about myself, and I Am expresses who I was and who I am now. The song talks about my hardships and struggles in life that I overcame to be a better person and individual. So I wanted to take you into the DAW that I'm using, which is Logic. Also DAW stands for um, Digital Audio Workstation, which is basically any platform that you can create your music on. And I prefer Logic because this is the one that I've been working with on the most. Or just working with the most. <laughs> so as you can see here, these are all my multiple tracks. And as you can see, I also label them corresponding to what they are. So these are all my vocal tracks. And here's where I guess start to get into my guitar parts for the instrumental. And then down below here, I use MIDI in order to create the beat for the song. So I'm quickly going to give you a rundown of like what it is that I produced here. And I'm going to actually do this for all the other songs. But uh, let's just start with the vocals first. So if I solo this out right here, you can see that these are the edited vocals for the song. I'm always scared of the truth that's hurting me But to be clear, I'm the one who's holding back So yeah, anyway, if I were to take off all the effects that are off it and just make it a naked track, then this is exactly what my vocals would sound like I'm always scared of the truth that's hurting me but to be clear, I'm the one who's holding back. So it doesn't really sound as full or compressed as I need it to be. So the first thing that I would do for my vocals is to, is to automatically put an EQ on. 
This helps emphasize where my vocals should be placed. Either they should be placed around low, mid, or high. So since I'm a tenor, I mainly focus on the high side of things. So you can see the, e, um, the EQ is right over here to the right, close to where all the high notes would be. And then over here is the mids, and then you can't see on screen, but if I go for, further to the left, that's where my lows are. So that's where I emphasized it over to the high. After that, I put in a compressor so that I can make the a voice a little bit louder because here's what it sounds like without it. I'm always scared of the truth that's hurting me. And this is what it sounds with the compressor. I'm always scared of the truth that's hurting me. So yes, that's actually much louder than it was before. And um, it actually helps to know whether or not that the vocals sound clear. So if they do not sound clear or if I'm a little bit flat, I will add a little bit of a pitch correction to it, similar to auto-tune where it adds a little bit of vibrato and um, it helps you stick on the right note. I'm always scared of the truth that's hurting me. So that's where it sounds like. And then after that, if I want to layer it, I add a little bit of ensemble to make sure that um, it sounds full. I'm always scared of the truth that's hurting me. So all these subtleties go into um, just vocals right now. I will actually be getting on to how I normally get my guitar parts, but I will do that for like other um, songs since we have like nine more to go. <laughs> now the second song is called Hatred. I already released this song through an EP before I made the album, but due to a lot of listeners liking the track, I decided to put it in the lineup. Um, although I did not produce the music, shout out to Giovanni Anderson, by the way, uh, I, wrote the mu um, I wrote the song besides the rap verse that Giovanni performed, and I wrote about the theme of the whole um, idea of the track. Hatred talks about the many obstacles that um, people encounter through their hard work, and some of them can be other people who may not support what you try to do. My answer to that is to keep moving on and to focus on your own work. So the song only has one vocal track um, for the main melody, and I used one harmony to add fullness to um, the entire track. I see the song in the shape of like an incline, where the peak of the song or like its energy reaches towards the end, and then it suddenly decreases like a mountain. Hatred was a simple song to record and produce, but the simplicity of it is what makes it such a great song to listen to. Switching things up a bit, the third track is actually a project that is part of a big AFA collaboration with all the focuses in the academy. Known as the Walk of Art, AFA students were given an element that was randomly chosen for smaller groups. These groups had to contribute something of their skill to make a big project. Being part of the music focus, me and my classmates Lauren McFarlane and Ashlyn Palai performed this song live that was requested to be produced. Special thank you to Lauren and Ashlyn for providing their musical talent on the track. I had so much fun working with them. The song is called The Water Project because our group was assigned the element of, well, <laughs> water. Surprisingly, this song took me only 20 minutes to write, but much longer to record. I used instruments that are most common, such as guitar, piano, and bass. Before this whole pandemic hit, I was planning to put in a drum kit, but I never got a chance to do so. With or without drums though, the song turned out just as great as when we performed it live. Collaboration is something I haven't delved into because I was more focused on a solo career, but knowing how to work with others is an amazing skill to develop, and I definitely recommend it to those going into audio production. Alright, so this is the project for the water project, <laughs> and um, right here, I actually started with the, uh, the guitar parts on top so that I know where they are as to where I'm um, la layering them along with like the other instruments such as the, the guitar with the piano and then I also put um, the bass over here under chorus aris and um, below these tracks are also my vocals so for this song I actually wanted to go over layering um, my instrument parts. So right here for the guitar, I just normally use um, um, a standard audio guitar effect that we have right here. Sounds a bit quiet.
So, when I was recording the guitar, um, this was actually before I um, effectively knew how to uh, record guitars. So, bef um, before um, I knew how to do it, I actually recorded a guitar um, with the microphone over the sound hole. And um, with, with this, with that kind of technique, it actually brings a lot of fullness into the guitar, but that's something that I really did not want. So I actually re recorded it where I would act, um, where, I, where I would put the microphone over the 12th fret of the guitar and it sounds a lot lighter. So I decided to do that technique on this part of the guitar and it sounds a lot more lighter than the one that I just played. <laughs> The sound still sounds full so there are all there are many factors as to how you can get a clean sound within your instruments including mic placement so with the other instrument which is the piano right here I decided to actually have two mics I decided to have a dynamic mic which is more up close and um, it doesn't pick up the sound that is surrounding the microphone more like what's actually in front of it so I actually stick this inside the grand piano and then I also added a condenser mic on the outside of the pianos to get a um, uh, to get like a real sound which is something that you would hear from far away and when you layer that together it sounds like this So, as you can see, you can hear a lot of the sound coming from the dynamic microphone, but it's just these little subtleties that you can hear within the background that are very quiet, but they also give a layer of fullness too. Alright, on to the next song. The fourth song is one of the first songs I tried to make a different beat on my own. I wanted to have a mood of something tropical, and so I used my choices of percussion such as bongos, shakers, clacks, and a wooden block. Like all pop songs, this was going to be a very sappy love song. So if you're going to make a love song, make it the best love song it can be. The track is called Trouble in Paradise, and it took a couple days for me to produce. This was a tough one to record on because the program system kept overloading during production. This was a result from toggling certain things on the project, such as my microphone output on all the tracks, but I'm glad I learned about that so I can be cautious the next time I record something. Unfortunately, the file was corrupted after turning the song into an MP3 file, so there were a few audio tracks that were unexpectedly deleted, but I can share some parts of the track, such as the beat and part of my vocals. Great, moving on to the next song, which is called Not The Same. I decided to swing back to a song similar to Hatred and have that trap slash rap kind of genre going on. But this track's tempo is faster and I experimented by doing some rapping myself. Oh, I'm definitely the next best rapper out there for sure. <laughs> anyway, the track was simple to make. I found a loop that I produced a beat to and this was where I found my sound for my specific voice. I realized that everyone sings differently so therefore producing vocals must be treated differently for every single vocalist. Some might place more emphasis in their mid-range, while a baritone or a bass needs to have a rich, full tone on the low end to let their bass notes ring out. Not the Same was a great song to record, and it's definitely my personal favorite on the album. Okay, so unfortunately I'm not able to show the um, project of Trouble in Paradise because the files are too slow since everything was corrupted, but that means that we can move on to the other songs. So I'm actually just going to start with um, Not the Same. And um, I actually want to go over the beat, which was actually very simple. Um, I was going to try to do it for Hatred, but obviously I do not have the file for that because it's Giovanni's. But however, this beat is mine. So I found a loop online and it's a simple loop, nothing too fancy. Um, but very full at the same time. And I figured I can work with this by adding some claps in there and the thing that's 
doing most of the work is actually the kick, um, and it adds a lot of um, syncopation within it too. One thing to add rhythm uh, to, or at least a sense of rhythm to it, is to keep hi-hats on just to make sure that it's going with at least every beat that you hear within the um, loop. After that, in your beat, you would want to add some fullness, which is an 808, which is basically just like a bass, and it just gives more punch to your beat. That's really just the bread and like the bread and butters to making a simple beat like that. I'm sure that there's other producers that um, go all out with it, um, but I just decided to keep it simple for this song, and it actually sounds good. And one trick that I learned um, to make your beat sound double time is just double time the hi hat. So when it goes to the chorus. Um, we have a sense of tempo change, even though it's the same tempo, but it just sounds faster because of the hi-hats. So yeah, that's basically just the whole thing throughout the whole song. And um, whenever I feel it's going to go to like a drop or like um, a loud moment, I add a little bit of a riser by taking a crest a crash symbol and then reversing it by turning it into an audio file so it sounds like this very short and simple but when combined with the beat then it kind of has that drive to it so yeah that was the beat for not the same and let's continue on to the next song the sixth song switches gears after the last track. Ain't Worried About a Thing is another old song I created, but I didn't get to finish it because, well, I got lazy. But when I went back to it, though, I found it to be such a chill vibe to song. You know, something that people can, like, bump their heads to. I only used a guitar and bass to create atmosphere for the track and placed a simple kick and snare to provide the rhythm. This was actually the last song I made to complete the album, and I think it turned out okay. There are a couple things I wish I could have fixed before I submitted in the album, but I think the track is great overall. Now, the seventh song is where I start to slow things down. Almost all the songs are at a medium or fast tempo, so I wanted to contrast the lineup by sticking a couple ballads in there. The song is called Younger Days. It's a song I created my sophomore year, and I ended up finishing it by the time I made those two songs for the AFA album, but I still felt something was missing. I went back to the track to apply what I learned about treating vocals, and I knew that this was the kind of sound that I was looking for. The song talks about comparing my life now to when I was a child. Being innocent and not knowing what the world is like is something I miss because it's something I didn't have to worry about when I was younger. I address this song to people of my age group and to those older than me because I know I cannot be the only one who misses this feeling from time to time. I tell everyone to have a good life and to always have your head up high. Like Hatred, the eighth song came from the same EP and I decided to put it into my album. This song was my personal favorite on the EP, but I put the track towards the end of the album. Like all love songs, there's nothing better than to match it with a sad, sad breakup sequel. Promises is a song that has more of an R&B feel to it, and it uses a guitar loop that I made. All I needed was a drum beat that felt a bit real, and I think it adds to the whole feel of the track. The reason my vocals sound different on this track than all the other ones is because I was still testing out other stuff than my vocals. I haven't found my specific sound when I created the track, but it does sound somewhat similar to my voice on all the other tracks. Alright, we are close to the end. The ninth song is one of the faster songs on the album. I made a guitar riff that I really liked and I kept it until I can make a song with it. I felt a really bluesy and country type vibe to this riff, so I tuned my guitar down a half step to meet with a key in E flat minor. This simple change allowed me to play lower notes on the guitar from standard tuning, and it provided a very gritty and heavy tone. This was by far the most challenging thing I've had to record, and it was all because of the vocals. 
Technically speaking, my voice is in a tenor range, and putting this song in such a low key is practically the same as asking a soprano to go a fifth past her lowest note. <laughs> Being able to treat my vocals in a different genre of music and matching the tone that the instruments gave was very difficult, but adding a couple of effects, including an octave stacker, helped the vocals blend with the music better. I really loved with how the song turned out to be, and I decided to put it as the finale of the album to end it off with a lot of energy. Okay, so you're probably wondering as to why I'm not showcasing any more songs um, besides the second to last one is because I'm actually running low on time here because this pro uh, this presentation is timed, so yeah. But I wanted to showcase this song because this was the more challenging songs to produce and I feel like I should at least cover maybe like two or three things. So the first thing I want to cover is knowing how to record um, rhythm guitar as well as solo guitar and knowing the difference in how in knowing how to record them. So for a solo guitar, uh, I used an acoustic guitar for both the solo and the rhythm guitar, but the EQ with them has to be different. So if you were to um, record a solo guitar, I'd recommend that you would not put EQs for um, the lows and the mids and more concentrate on just the highs because a solo is on like the lighter side and it's like the main thing that you want to hear which is basically um, the same thing as basically trying to solo out a tenor solo from just the rhythm section which is your bass and baritones um, and such. Um, if it can load please I guess it's not gonna load today. Wait, yes it is. Okay, so I actually decreased the mids over here and there's nothing on the lows if um, I go to the left, but there's a little bit of emphasis on the highs and that's what allows the solo guitar to sound clear and crisp. <laughs> So yeah, and the reason that you don't really hear much bass in that solo is because it's being carried by the other things such as the such as the rhythm guitar and the bass. So for rhythm guitar, you're going to do exactly the opposite of what you would do to the solo guitar, which is actually boosting up um, the lows as well as the mids in order to get that fullness. So here's what it sounds like. And if I were to pair that up with the bass, then it have that rich tone. So yeah. That is the difference in knowing how to record a solo guitar and rhythm guitar. The next thing I want to go over is knowing how to properly treat your vocals in a kind of song that you wouldn't normally sing. So with this kind of genre, it's country, it's bluesy, definitely not my type of music I would normally be singing. And since I'm a tenor, what you would normally hear is a really light voice that is almost airy and has no correlation to be singing a country bluesy song. So once I get rid of these effects, um, we can uh, continue. Okay, so I got rid of all the effects and this is basically what a naked vocal track would sound like in this song. I washed my hands from the blood I bleed and I understand it's killing me. Yeah, so not full at all whatsoever. So, of course, like I said before, we just add a little bit of EQs. And then also to add fullness, we put the ensemble on and then have a little bit of pitch correction just to make sure that none of my notes are flat. And you would have something like this. I washed my hands from the blood I bleed. Yes, so big difference right there. 
Um, next thing I did was actually put on a little reverb so that my voice could um, be spread throughout the headphones where it you can't really hear it through your left and right. So I just made sure I put a little bit of reverb just to have some more of that fullness. I washed my hands from the blood I bleed and I understand. So that sounds good so far. And the last and final thing that I did um, in order to make me have that low kind of timbre in my voice was I actually added an octave stacker using a pedal board that you would normally use um, for a guitar input. And um, uh, it's called Dr. Octave. And what it basically does is it adds just another octave to whatever track it's on. And then as for the squash compressor, that's basically, um, it allows the octave to be louder than my actual voice. So that's what you can actually hear. So in fact, let me turn on the effect and here's what it sounds like. Oh. I washed my hands from the blood I bleed and I understand that sounds so different from just the naked track and once you put it in with the actual song it actually blends well I wash my hands from the blood I That was the production of Sweat, Blood, and Tears. As a final closure, the tenth song is another ballad of a cool idea that I got last year. I wanted to have a song with just me and the guitar, no other instruments. The cool thing is I would have a delay pedal with the guitar and it creates this kind of spacey atmosphere to the song. Lullaby is a ballad that I want listeners to fall asleep to. I basically used a lot of reverb that felt soothing to the listener's ear. I like the idea of ending off the album with this track because after hearing the last one, I figured they deserve something more relaxing. Unless, you know, rock and aggressive singing is relaxing to you guys. I, I don't judge. I just want to say thank you for listening about the making of my album, and I hope that you listen to it as soon as it releases. I Am is scheduled to release on the 22nd of May 2020, but nothing is official yet. I will keep my classmates updated as to when more is to be expected. I want to thank the AFA for giving me this opportunity to create this project, and I want to thank those who support my work and my journey to becoming a music producer. Thank you guys again for listening to me. This is Ian, and I hope to see you again one day. And all these long nights thinking I'm trying so hard to be something I'm not all these long nights dreaming I see now that I'm fine with who I am I am, I am, am, I am, I am, am, I am.